when these excuses are being made, some companions say that we can't join you because we have to, we don't have anyone to look after our families. Others say that, Ya Rasulullah, my business, I have to stay behind because this is the time of year that we, we harvest our crops. Others say that we don't have the resources, we don't have the weapons. Now, how is the Prophet supposed to respond to this? So he has companion after companion giving these excuses, failing to support him. And how is the Prophet supposed to recognize? Because the Prophet has many companions. How is he supposed to distinguish between the sincere believers and the hypocrites? How is he supposed to distinguish between those who truly feel that they are part of the struggle, who truly feel that they are part of the community, and those who don't consider themselves part of the community? The next verse, the next verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the Prophet a way to distinguish between the true believers, the Prophet's true supporters, those who, tr who truly feel that they are partners with him in this struggle, they feel that they're participants in the affairs of the community, and the hypocrites. How does the Prophet distinguish? Allah says in ayah number 50, إِن تُصِبْكَ حَسَنَةٌ تَسُؤْهُمْ وَإِن تُصِبْكَ مُصِيبَةٌ يَقُولُونَ قَدْ أَخَذْنَا أَمْرَنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ وَيَتَوَلَّوْ وَهُمْ فَرِحُونَ Allah says, if some good, so Allah is informing the Prophet how to distinguish between the munafiqeen and the mu'mineen. Allah says, He describes the attitude, the, the mindset, the psyche of the munafiqeen, their behavior. If some good befalls you, meaning the Prophet or the Muslim community, if some good befalls you, it troubles them. But if some affliction befalls you, they say, we already took precautions beforehand. And they turn away rejoicing. Allah tells the Prophet that the munafiqeen are the ones who when you face hardship, they say, I told you so. They don't, they don't call people to be patient. They don't say that it's our honor to struggle with the messenger, that the faraj will come. No, they say, we told you so. They act as though they are more wise than the prophet. We told you so. We told you guys not to go to the battlefield. We told you not to travel and fight in Tabuk. So they say that we told you so. When, when affliction befalls you. And when anything good happens, when you're victorious, when the Prophet would achieve victory, it will trouble them. They would not express joy or happiness or contentment when the Muslims would achieve anything. They don't desire goodness for the Prophet or for the Muslim community. They have this spiritual disease of hasad. They don't want any khayr for others. There's a a beautiful hadith from Imam Jafar al-Sadiq salawatullahi alayhi where the Imam alayhi salam he says he quotes Luqman there is an entire surah in the Quran named after Luqman surah number 31 and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah Luqman he mentions some pieces of advice that Luqman gives to his son some of that advice is mentioned in the Quran and Ahlul Bayt السلام, they share with us the advice that was not mentioned in the Quran. Among the instructions, the, the moral advice that Luqman gives to his son, Imam al Sadiq says, Qala Luqman, ulibnihi. Luqman once said to his son, Lil Hasidi thalathu alamat, an envious person has three signs. There are three indicators that someone is arrogant, that someone is envious, that someone is jealous. 
And this was how the Munafiqeen were towards the Prophet. They had this envy towards him. There are three signs of an envious person. Number one is يَغْتَابُ إِذَا غَاب They backbite when others are absent. When someone is not in the gathering, they talk about them. They backbite them. The munafiqeen, when they're amongst each other, they backbite the Prophet. They backbite the believers. They have their private gatherings and they slander the believers. So number one is يَغْتَابُ إِذَا غَاب Number two وَيَتَمَلَّقُ إِذَا شَهِد يَتَمَلَّقُ إِذَا شَهِد means that they they flatter you in your presence. If you recall in the the previous verses that we covered you notice that when the munafiqeen were asking the Prophet to grant them permission to stay behind and not fight what do they do? They overcompensate because they're they're untruthful. They say, Ya Rasulullah, we swear by God that if we were able to join you, we would have joined you. We love you so much. Our hearts are with you. They flatter you in your presence. And you notice that the munafiqeen, they had very sweet tongues, but their hearts were bitter. The mu'mineen, they are people of amal. The munafiqeen are people of talk. They talk a lot. Amir al-Mu'mineen, for example, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al-Mu'mineen didn't talk very much during the lifetime of the Prophet. You know, most of the ahadith that we have from Ali ibn Abi Talib are after the Prophet's death. During the time of the Prophet, Amir al-Mu'mineen was not a talker. He was a doer. When you see the others, the hypocrites around the Prophet, they would talk a lot. They flatter when they are in your presence. And number three, And they rejoice when others are afflicted. They rejoice. In the battle of Uhud, the Munafiqeen were rejoicing. In the beginning of the battle of Hunayn, many of them were rejoicing. They were happy that the Prophet was initially you know, uh, being overwhelmed. Now, so the Prophet is, is dealing with these types of people. There are those who are giving him logistical excuses why they can't participate. Some who are a bit more clever, they give religious excuses as to why they're not joining the Prophet. Imagine, Rasulullah is telling you, come with me, and they're giving a religious excuse why they should stay behind. So who teaches religion? You are the prophet. And then you have these munafiqeen who rejoice when you are afflicted and they're troubled when you are successful. How is the prophet supposed to respond to them? Rasulullah in the following verses, he's given two beautiful responses, especially in times of difficulty when the munafiqeen, when the hypocrites rejoice.